What's up guys, it's Fitch and I'm back with a new video. Today, I'm going to talk about lighting. So I know that oftentimes as aspiring filmmakers or as filmmakers, uh, budget is always something that's hard, right? So sometimes you might not have as many lights as you would want on a set, right? Or let's say you're trying to do an interview, you know, and you only have, you don't even have one light or any other type of videography that requires lighting or cinematic lighting and you lack the amount of light that you would want. So this is the video for you today. So today I'm going to give you as many lighting options as I can that you can try and you can do with only one light. Now these lighting setup will be great for film. They will be great for YouTube videos. They'll be great for interviews. Basically, music videos, basically any type of videos you want to do these, at least one of these lights setup will help with that purpose. So the first lighting setup that we're going to see today is called Paramount Beauty Butterfly Lighting. Okay. So this lighting is very often used in YouTube videos actually. So a lot of times people will use this with a ring light and have a ring light on top of them and then facing down to give that look. So for this look, I actually used a softbox on the light, the Godox SL60W, and put it right behind my camera and right above at an angle, right? The angle was about, I'd say, aiming down 45 degrees, uh, but I'm no mathematician. So that look is called Paramount Lighting because back in those old days, like the 50s, Paramount used to use this type of light and a lot of their productions. So that look is very flattering because it eliminates a lot of the face at the uh, cheek level and gives a structured more um, almost model type look. So it's very often used in um, YouTube videos, but also in interviews as well. Uh, it's a very nice look and uh, to a certain point cinematic, um, I would only use it in specific moments when it comes to film, but it's a very good look for a lot of different types of setting. So that was our first lighting setup. The second lighting setup that I'm going to show is under lighting, right? So basically this lighting setup is when you take the light and you put it, it's the same angle as the paramount light. So straight on, but this time we're going to shoot the light from below and basically it's going to aim up at the uh, subject. Again, we're still using the Godox SL60W with a softbox to soften the light and not have hard shadows. So aiming it up at the subject, as you can see, gives a very um, almost uh, horror film-esque look to it. So it can be used in a lot of different type of settings, like I just said, horror films, but also you can see that you could also use it. For example, let's say you're doing some type of tech related uh, film or video and you need to pretend like uh, the person's working on some computer or some big surface um, type computer or light. Right? So you can use this light to simulate or motivate the lighting from that computer using that type of lighting setup. So the light shining down from below would give that look. Again, it's another look that you can use for different types of settings. Okay, so now let's get to the other lighting setup. This next lighting setup is called the Rembrandt. Okay, it's named Rembrandt after the painter Rembrandt, who is very famous for using this lighting setup in his painting. Yes, I said lighting setup in painting because painters actually light their paintings in a certain way and place the shadows and the faces of the people in a certain way, right? So uh, Rembrandt, uh, the way he light his figures in a lot of his uh, paintings is that way. And why is it so famous? Because it's used a lot on Hollywood production and films and short films and feature films. Okay. Uh, one way you can know that you have this setup is with that little triangle that you see on the person's face, right? So 
basically to have this look, you would take your light and you would put it at about 45 degrees uh, angle to the left or right of the person, right? Uh, so you would put it at a 45 degree, uh, obviously uh, from above, aiming down and again using a soft box like we did or some type of diffusion to soften the light okay unless for cinematic purposes you want to have harsh lighting i suggest to use some type of diffusion so that is the next lighting setup that we use the Rembrandt lighting it's used a lot in different productions this next lighting setup is a very dramatic setup and it's called split lighting Basically, as you can see, we're basically moving along uh, a circle, right? So now we have gotten to 90 degrees angle where the light is facing the person from one direction, obviously blocking the other side of the person from getting some light. So that creates what we call split lighting. And split lighting basically splits the person in two, one side with light and one side with darkness. <laughs> so. That look is very dramatic. It is very, very dramatic and it's used often in film when you have a character that is hiding something or you want to show the tension, right? So this look is, is used often in a lot of production. Um, and again, it's very dramatic. That's why I wouldn't suggest to use that for a YouTube video unless that's the purpose, you know, uh, or for an interview, but for film, there's a lot of different ways this look can be used. And then it gets even more interesting when you shoot that look from the darkness. So what that means is that basically you're taking your camera and placing the camera on the side of the darkness. So basically the side that is not lit and you're shooting the subject from that side. Now what that creates is an even more dramatic look where the side that you're looking at is not very visible, but you still see the person well enough because you're not fully on the dark side, right? You're probably at another 45 degree angle and it creates an even more dramatic look. So that's another look you can use and film to tell the story. Now, don't forget, you need to light with purpose, right? So whether it be for interviews, for YouTube, and especially for film, you need to light with purpose. Your lighting needs to have a purpose. It has to be motivated and it needs to have a purpose. Don't use split lighting just for the fun or the sake of using split lighting. You need to use it for a reason. Don't use Rembrandt just for the fun of it. Use it for a reason. There are reasons why you would use a certain type of lighting and figure out those reasons and learn how or when to use a certain type of lighting. Now the next lighting setup that we did, so we removed the soft box from the light and we aimed it at the ceiling, okay? So now what does that look create? So basically, if you don't know how light works, is that light is like a wave, like a particle, it travels a lot. So let's say you're aiming your light at a wall. The light will travel to the wall, but it will not stay there, right? Uh, so some of the light will bounce off the wall and go into new directions, and then that will probably bounce somewhere else and go into new direction. Obviously, as it continues bouncing, the amount of light that bounces is lesser and lesser, but this is how light works, right? So if you take your light and bounce it to the ceiling, you are basically diffusing that light and creating even more light. Okay, how does that work is that by bouncing the light to the ceiling, the light will go to the ceiling and then all that light that's going through the ceiling, especially if your ceiling is white, will bounce all around the room. So basically by bouncing the light to the ceiling, you are creating a very natural look that could be used in a lot of projects. You could use that in a film, you could use that in a commercial, you could use that in a lot of different types of setting. So bouncing the light through the ceiling or to a wall will effectively create a bigger diffusion because the wall is much bigger than the softbox that you're going to be using. The, the, the ceiling is much bigger than the softbox you're going to be using. So the diffusion will be even bigger and bigger, bigger source for diffusion, softer light, right? So that's basically the look we created in that shot. We only bounce it to the ceiling and then let the light spill all over. 
So for this next setup, what we did is that we took the uh, light, uh, again, without a softbox, and then we put it behind the subject. You can even see the stand there. We put it behind the subject above and then pointing down, right? But what we did is that we took a uh, silver reflector and put it right under the subject. What that creates is a, is a high hot backlight and then a bounce as a fill kind of filling in the face of the person, okay? So that lighting could be used in a film setting, right? Um, I can see it being used in a daylight type of setting where there's a window and then you would use a light coming from outside and from the window shining down to the person and then having a bounce could be a table or anything bouncing the light back to the face to light the face now why would you use that let's say you're trying to emulate the sun right so you could use that light it would probably have to be a very bright light like an hmi to basically emulate the sun and then use a bounce to light the subject i actually saw a uh, behind the scene from um, one of Quentin Tarantino's movies, uh, Hateful Eight, where his uh, cinematographer, DP, actually used that setup for some of the scenes. So it is a setup that you can use when it comes to film. The next setup that we're looking at right now is basically lighting from the back. So when you're lighting from the back or backlighting, it creates the silhouette effect. So this effect has been used in a lot of different films. It has been used in a lot of videos and a lot of music videos, and it's a pretty good effect, right? The silhouette effect, the unlock my character effect. When used right, this effect looks beautiful. You just, again, you have to know when to use that. Like I said, lighting with purpose is really important, right? Don't just light a scene like that because you feel like it. You know, you could see someone use that for a horror film or for another type of film, you know, but again, purpose, light with purpose, okay? Uh, so the next lighting setup that we used is the overhead lighting, okay? So overhead lighting basically is that you have the light coming right above. So the light is placed right above the person, right above the subject and is shining down. Now this particular light setup is very famous. It's very often used in a lot of production and a lot of film production. One of them being the Godfather. I personally call this lighting the Godfather lighting, okay? Basically what this lighting creates is a very ominous, very uh, dark-ish tone to your production and your character. Uh, why? Because it effectively hides a bit of the person's eyes. So sometimes you don't really see where they're looking at. You know, you can make this sliding even more dramatic if you remove this, the, the diffusion, the soft box, and just aim it straight down, where you're gonna have like basically Frankenstein um, eyes, right? Uh, so basically what it creates is those uh, shadows first under the eyes, uh, which we call the raccoon eyes, and with less diffusion, those shadows just take over the whole, the entire face and basically uh, your eyes. So it's, again, used very well. It can look very good, but again, you have to light this with purpose. If you want as well, you can bounce that light using a reflector or a bounce card and putting that right under the subject. And from there, it will bounce and light a bit of the face, which will kind of dim down how dramatic this looks. Uh, so that's something as well you can do. Adding diffusion, adding a bounce, a reflector can shape up your light even more, right? So obviously you're still using one light, but there's a ton of diffusion and reflection and bounce that you can add to shape that light. But that's basically it guys. So these are the setups that you could do uh, at least the ones that I thought of, that you can do with one single light. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things you can do with one light. So don't think that having only one light limits you when it comes to shooting a film, a music video, an interview, or any type of videos at all, okay? So if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. And if you love what I do, what I create, don't forget to subscribe and share. Uh, look at what else is on my channel. There's a lot of other videos. So go there and uh, 
go check it out. Thank you very much. Fitch is out. Peace.